What's up guys, welcome to the first ever Drift Games at Club Loose Invitational. A couple of months ago, we put out a pretty controversial post where we said everybody's got to up their game, get a better car, get better at driving, and we're going to have some awesome events. This weekend, we find out if those changes made any difference. Let's get into it. Look at these two squares discussing which one of their Christmas jumpers is less lame. Newsflash, both of them are lame. Don't look like these squares this Christmas. If you're a car head or you want the perfect present for a car head, check it out. The limited edition, 100 only ever made Christmas jumper from Drift Games. It's got turbos, it's got steering wheels, it's got reindeers with turbos. It's got everything you need to look cool this Christmas and it's available now, only making 100 of them. Well, we did take some for ourselves. So less than 100 available now on the driftgames.live shop. Get on it and happy Christmas. Okay, so in the last video you saw my MX-5 refresh, but there's still a few things to get figured out on that. So in the meantime, I think I'm going to take the uh, 1J powered Corolla because Dave's out in the Rosa, no one's here to say otherwise. So I think I'm gonna have a bit of fun myself in a car that I've never drove before and a very powerful car at that. Probably the most powerful car I've actually drove. So yeah, no better way of starting the weekend than chucking yourself into the deep end, I guess. I don't know why Dave took the Corosa because that's so good, but what a car. Why did you choose this? How's the Corolla? Unbelievable, it's like, like the MX-5 with power. That's what it is like. It's also on low boost there, so it's 80 horsepower down. There's a button that says high boost. <laughs> no, I've not pressed the button yet. I haven't dared press the button. It keeps on her toes, that thing, doesn't it? Oh, it's so good, so good. Honestly, I love it, I love it. You saying this, I'm it's saying that. It's, it's the difference between riding on like a skateboard and a couch. That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you get a lot more people on this couch. A lot more people on the couch, it's a lot more comfortable. <laughs> nice uh, sport in the Movember. That's me. <laughs> okay, so that was just a hoot, but now it's getting serious because... 
P-Flame is in the house. So this is untested, unmapped, on a lot of stuff. Let's go and see if it will drive. Okay, so that obviously, as you could hear, that was a bit of a disaster. It was um, spluttering and bluttering and it just wasn't revving up. So uh, we never actually mapped that car. You never had time to go down to be mapped. So we took a chance and it obviously hasn't paid off. But tonight we're hoping to get it to the rollers and we'll be mapping it and hopefully that gets rid of the issue. But continuing the uh, theme of driving other people's cars, um, I've just been offered to drive another car, which Hello, Josh. I'm not sure why you suggested this. Ah, uh, come on, you regret. So, Josh, run of the mill, two JZ, S chassis. Run of the mill. This is like a top of the line. Ah, uh, yeah, but you know yourself. You'll be great. Come on. So, two JZ, probably like six, seven hundred horsepower, and yeah, as you can see. It's competing in drift masters. I'm gonna take two handy laps now because I definitely do not want to break anything on this car. So I don't know. You can't turn down this kind of offer, so it's up in, I guess. Are you sure? I'll give you one last out. You'll be grand, Josh. Come on. Right. I animal crazy animal all together ridiculous so it's fast about the um, traded I go in his car and he's gone in our Verosa <laughs> what, what, what is the comparison great swap Josh great swap I don't know what you you accidentally you, I think you wanted to build a car but you built a rocket ship instead yeah, the difference as well Josh is you ran semi-slick tires there as well 
I could feel that the whole car vibrated with the yeah. grip that I could feel. Yeah, yeah. That was a good experience, though. Well, thank you very and I'm, much. And I'm loving life here in this gem of a car you as well. You know what? <laughs> sushi, sushi. There you go. Right. You know what? Swap. Deal done. Yeah, de yeah. Deal done. So as it's winter, obviously it gets dark a lot sooner. For example, it's currently 4.20. So instead of cutting the action short, short, we have lights covering the whole of the Japfest layout and we're gonna do a nighttime drift jam. So this is definitely a first for us. It's not the first time it's been done, obviously, in Mondello, but it's the first time for us to do this. It's a last minute thing, and yeah, pretty cool. First time drifting at night in Mondello Park, which is it's gonna be awesome. Not only first time drifting dark in Mondello, but it's actually first time drifting dark ever. Here goes nothing, I guess. That was awesome. Sketchy, like I said before, but that was an experience to say the least. You were literally aiming from light to light, which is ridiculous. But it's still pretty cool to do something for the first time like that, that's a little bit scary. And it was great for the people that came to the Invitational to watch as well. Like we said, a little bit of a jam session for afterwards, but it's going dark. We had the track till six anyways. So a really cool thing to do in my opinion. But the night is not over for me because Outside you see, and earlier on in the video you saw that it was misfiring and spluttering. So, Lloyd has very kindly said he will go back to the dyno tonight to run it on there. We think it's the timing or something like that. So he's gonna run it on the dyno and hopefully this thing will be ready for tomorrow because... <laughs> it's be disappointing if it doesn't drive. So fingers crossed all goes well. like a choo-choo train.
I'd say bitch seat, I guess. The DRT Automotive is take this toasty in here. That is ice. Nothing like a late night dino session. Cannot thank these guys enough. Nathan, who's one of the drivers that was at the bash, just offering to bring the car down here. Lloyd Patterson for obviously, we get all of our cars dyno by him and well, I mean the results speak for themselves. And another driver, Dean Burns, just decided to pop down just to help, didn't even ask him. So, so just seen guys, incredible bunch of lads. So Lloyd's just getting all the timing and everything sorted on the engine because obviously it's a new engine that's got it, even though it is standard like the other one, there's still a lot to sort out. And obviously this car's running all the link goodies and sensors and everything, which is the original reason why we think this car lasted so long is because we had all the parameters in there to cut it off if it was about to blow, running too lean, anything like that. So again, and I thanked him so many times for this car. Thank you Link ECU for keeping my car alive. And fingers crossed it will keep this engine alive for the same amount of time as the last engine. Right, I mean uh dialed it all and we're gonna start doing some pulls. See how much power this will make. <laughs> the only thing I insisted on was the plate. Do whatever you want with it. I just want plate. Which if you don't know is um, what every single tuner loves to hear. The engine is off which hopefully is a good thing? Yes, everything's good. Some things had been changed. We actually just wiped the ECU, started again from scratch and did everything my way. It's a little different maybe, but it should be reliable. Everything seems good and it's ready for you to do your best to kill it now. That's exactly the plan. So we came down here for a quick timing change and you started the map from scratch again. Yeah, your torque and horsepower made 237 and uh, 230, so basically made the same torque as horsepower. You said 237 horsepower? Yes. This, I thought this is a 300 horsepower car. You've disappointed me now. Sometimes this happens. Well, you know what? Since driving my... the new SR from the old SR, that dropped 100 horsepower and that drove way better, so... Dino numbers aren't everything. Thank you very much, Lloyd. I mean, this is now about 10 at night. This was a quick quick thing that we came down for but very much appreciated I probably shouldn't have volunteered for this this morning but anyway here we are and here we are and it's done and here we go this i can't even say this name in public t flame will be on track tomorrow stay two in mondello i look like arson wenger <laughs> so today is day two of the invitation yesterday was a messy day for video because we did a lot of driving we were doing passenger rides in the Barossa, the Corolla. Me and Josh were jumping between the two. It was a lot of fun. The driving was amazing. Look at this. There's a Mark II Escort going up the straight right now. So the quality of cars driving was unreal. We made a lot of changes since the last event, and it looks like they're really working out. Everyone smiles on faces. We even did some night drifting last night, so there was a lot going on, and we were trying to run all that and keep the chaos under control. So we didn't film so much, but today we are going to film a bit more. A little damp in the morning. It is very cold. But cold is good for cars, bad for humans, and good for drifting, and good for tires. So we're going to go out on the track, have some fun, get some smiles on faces, and get into day two of the Invitational with Club Loose. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to test my car. It's warm enough right now. And fingers crossed, we should be good. All the soot got moist last night and it's shot out. Bit of an issue, but no issue.
like the people outside the shop wearing passion spins, so not doing it anymore. Let's get into some passion spins. Our customers liars. It's a hard man on tires that lad. Realistically they were the wet tires from Wayne's car so there's only 12 PSI in them so obviously they'd be either but we're not gonna tell Josh that. So it's lunchtime at day two of the Drift Games Invitational at Club Loose and we are going to give you guys a little tour of the cars that have turned up this weekend. Now remember it's been kind of rainy, kind of mucky, kind of snowy so everything's a little bit muddy. But the stuff is pretty uh, nice. Trying to coolly drive by there. He did and he's got a registration on that car size so of the car. So basically what we did with this event was we tried to make people make a little bit of an effort or pick some of the higher level cars that, to make some higher level driving, to make it look better for the spectators. It was a controversial statement, but we think it's paid off. Track has been faster than any other event we've done, but also the cars are pretty cool as well. So let's go for a look. So we'll start with our boy Lloyd, who does all of our tuning. He was doing your tuning last night. Yeah, he was literally in the video just moments ago. This is his beautiful new machine. And this is a 1UZ powered Oryx 7 with trumpets, which means it's the coolest thing here. It's a debut this weekend for this car, and it's still in one piece, and look how good it looks. It looks phenomenal. The, the cool thing with this, and you can see behind it, he's got his own little team. He's got the same livery on his Corolla. Well, like, when a guy turns up to an event with a 1UZ Independence Rata Body Oryx 7 and a K20 Turbo Corolla. He's just kind of doing his thing, isn't he? But Lloyd, so you decided that one car wasn't hardship enough. You made two cars. Yeah, couldn't trust one car to stake one for the full weekend, you know? What he's done here is try to justify a very poor financial decision of building a very rare chassis and then said, you know what, something a bit more, something a bit less rare, something a little bit more, and then he builds an Oryx 7. We don't have to move very far to we find more cool cars. We found another cool car beside the cool car. So 3UZ 4.3 yeah. uh, in a very, very light car. Yeah, 900-ish kilos. So 900 kilos, yeah. and what, what power like? So 3-ish? 350. And in a bread van of a car. Yeah. Which, like a, so this is a KE, technically a commercial vehicle. So a lot of people think because of this, I, I, it fooled me as well, because of this overfender, yeah. you think yeah. this is a four-door wagon. Oh, why actually, yeah. But it actually was a van then take the side of the van out, put in the Perspex windows, and it's actually, it's technically a coupe. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll see you out there. We won't miss you. It's a nice bright color. Yeah, oh yeah. We've gone from cool now to ridiculous. Well, this is pretty much a Driftmaster spec car here. This is, this is a 800 horsepower, 2JZ, everything. Everything. And that's really nice. But then this is also, this is a bit of meat. This is Daniel McConnell's car. And I am, as you know, big four-door 32 guy. Red is one of your favorite colors for these, isn't it? 
I think it's just a strong, bold colour that's kind of sporty for a very kind of flash car, so it gives it a bit of a pump. And he's been driving for a day and a half now, and it's still in a relatively one piece. Missing the bumper. Is the bumper okay? Yeah, yeah, on one, one piece. One piece, that's it's all we want. It's a, it it's does fit here. <laughs> <laughs> he, he if knows. it's in the pits, then you can't break it. Yeah, and I'd say the guy that's on the most laps, more than our Verosa doing pasture spins, is the other Verosa that's here. And this one is, this is a cool car. Like, this is cool. It's a ton of work done, ton of power. And he's been out there. And this car, again, is a street legal car. You can see the registration on it, but he's out there absolutely sending it into 20 car trains with this, which is nuts. And then you can go through all, and that's him, <laughs> Barossa. Then you've got Cresta. Then you've got JZX100. Then you've got another very fancy JZX100. Then you've got a JZX90. It's very rare that you get all these in one run. And a JZX100 Cresta, if I'm not mistaken. So basically every single four-door Toyota you can imagine is in one section here. Another one on, another 100 on, on a trailer. Like, this is what it's all about. Cool, cool cars. And then we move from all the JZX boys who are kind of taking this area to all, I would say, the cars that have done the most work this year in IDC, the Irish Drift Championship, and are now on their last event of the year are definitely looking a little worse for wear. Yeah. So this is Alan Lachlan's car. This car has been in every round this year, and you can see these cars are all ready for their winter, what I call stripped down, redo, new kit, new everything, but the last event, obviously. So the car might look rough on the outside, but then when you look at the internals of the car, she is absolutely beautiful. This is like top of the line now in Irish drifting. Yeah, top of the line. I think all these cars here, you can see, are falling apart, but all of them are very, very, very nice cars underneath. And one very interesting car, which we only this weekend we've seen for the first time, is our friend Ralph's brand new, another Oryx 7. This is cool. So we've got Wise 5 on the front. Wait, 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 get ready for the God. God's car, <laughs> God's engine, one mix. I quite uh, like the dash that got made as well. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a, you know when they do quilted seats in like Audis, but it's in metal. And, yeah. I, quite, and I really That's like exactly that. That's exactly what it is. It, it, it looks pretty really cool. It could have just left it, but it looks very like uh, Mad Maxi and very, uh, I don't know what the right word is, uh, appropriate for how much madness is going on. There's a lot of cars now, day two, they're, they're losing bumpers. We lost our, I lost, we don't have, we, I also, so you, 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 you lost yours, and then you took off the Verosas. I lost my bumper on the Crawl after day one, and then I, I hit Keen Droney driving the Verosa, I hit my own car with my own car, and took the second bumper off, and you lost your bumper just driving around. Yeah, I, I just lost mine. So there's not one rear bumper left in the place. <laughs> on the rear, it just looks like a non-assuming well, like, IS200. It looks 200. like a very nice Alteza, and now it's a very amazing Alteza, that's what this is. It is a phenomenal It was a lot nicer at the start of the weekend when I had the full Look, we're all in that boat. We were saying it. This is not the time. We should have taken the video at a quarter past eight on Saturday morning. That would have been beautiful. Yeah, Everyone was yeah. like, but this thing is gorgeous. And a lot of people think that I have a problem with IS200s, and I do, when they have the stock drive. They're just in. left as they come. Yeah, they're shit. Because they look but good. You... They, they are a very good looking car. They, they, like even the fenders and stuff, wheels make them look fantastic. Black is my favorite color in them. And then this is the engine. This is what they should have come with. Yeah, they should have come with an RB. Yeah, Nissan. A Nissan RB. Should have been put into them from the start. Any, to be honest with you, anything, whether someone puts a 1UZ, 1J, 2J, as or as long as it's not the standard, standard engine. Standard engine. Yeah. And see, and he owns one. So yeah. it's not just me. This is just panel cool. Van, yeah. This is a panel, panel van again. But so cool that we see so many of these here. Old school stuff that kind of when we got into drifting, this is what most people had. This is the what you want, isn't it? Yep. What happened the door? Oh, that's a scary one. That's literally where you're sitting. Yeah. And as we know, these old K's are built like the, you know the real yeah. heavy duty. <laughs> I'd say you can bend quite a bit with your hand on these. And you have, is it a 20 valve? 20 valve. 20 yeah. valve on IDBs. Yeah. yeah. Which is like, and you have a link in there as well. The man knows, the man knows. So one of the things we try to encourage with these new events is to get together with your friends, make a team, and go out there and kind of do the weekend as a, as a team rather than just individuals. And these guys have created a team called 272, and they have two E46s and a 180, all in the same liveries. And all these cars were pretty rough around the edges about four or five months ago, and now they look very, very cool. So these guys have done what we, we are, we're commending you, because we're saying, <laughs> getting together with a bunch of friends, yeah, yeah. making the car look like a team, getting some runs together, and then you get look back at the photos and everything just looks sick and cool, and it's like, you get to enjoy the event for another couple of days after, because everything looks awesome. Yeah, and all three cars, I've noticed all weekend, well, this one was, Giving issues. It's showing time. Showing time. We, 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 we knew this one was going to come home in one piece. That was <laughs> yes. one hat to. But what I like about it is that E46s, yes, there's loads of them. But if you put a little bit of taste into them, they just look like. 
pro cars. They look stylish. I love the liveries. I think everything looks fantastic. So I really commend you guys on it. Then when the three of them are all lined up, get those photos together. Like when you're driving together, it's awesome. So take yourself back to the heyday of JDM drifting and bar the Hilux in the background. This is what you get. Sephiro and a crown drifting two days amongst 100 cars on track. That is what we came here to see. So this is, um, <laughs> this, this is, this is Ryan. Ryan does cages and, and, and occasionally drifts. Occasionally. And occasionally drifts. If you're a fan of the channel, you know Ryan does all of our fabrication work. And this is his drift car, which usually sits under a pile of cardboard and dust doing nothing. But he decides to bring it out for the end of the year because he's been stuck inside drift cars for probably about 11 months. Might as well have one that moves. Actually, Ryan, you never get to see a drift car that actually turns on most of the time. No, no. <laughs> this car is so funny because you do literally abandon this. Oh, yeah. I do nothing with it. Like I, I spend more time cleaning cobwebs off it then. And then like a button power wash, a whole weekend of flying and then back in the cobwebs again. Yeah, for back in the cobwebs. That's, that's, a, that's a sign of a good car. He was stress testing my own cages yesterday by pushing <laughs> doors. So I think I think he's trying to get himself some more work. That's what he's doing. He's trying to bend a few cage bars on my car just so he gets a few extra nicks over to Christmas. <laughs> Ryan. What RB. It's an RB again. The RBs are getting rare, I think, in drift cars. Most people move to the 1Js and 2Js. 1Js and 2Js, but the RB is, it does make this the crisp, the crispier sound. <laughs> I am not buying anything, anything anymore. I'm banned, I'm banned from buying anything this year. I can I've, confirm, he is banned. I reached my quota of buying things in May. <laughs> you you excelled at this year. Now it's December. Look, look at his hands compared to my hands in terms of who does that, more work this weekend. That's a great worker. <laughs> He's all the work. Yeah, it's like, I did not say Josh in a small bit and then this lad. <laughs> So this is my, um, I don't know why, my favourite BMW. Except it was mint and now it has a massive smasheroo on the door. But that's from trying, that's from, he was out there pushing people around. That's what happens and that's how you get better is by, like none of these incidents are people driving badly, it's just driving to the edge. And that's what we want to see too, but you're still doing it in cool cars. New door, new bit of livery, ready to go again. That's only a new door, there's not much damage at all. This car has been chasing me all weekend. And he's got bells on there, you can hear him because that's like a cow behind yeah. behind you. I say, every time I get chased by this, I just see the wreath. And I'm hoping it's a Christmas wreath, not, not like a funeral wreath for the, for the run, but uh, this is a very, very cool E36. Did you see for the night fight as well? He sellotaped on the I lights. Saw the lights were pretty, were pretty good, and then... You want me to turn them on? Turn on the, li turn on the lights now so we see it. Better on the other side. <laughs> I'll say it's better at night time. We appreciate the effort. No, because because I laughed a lot when that came over the hill last night at the night fight. I was like, look, it's Christmas tree, just get one. I think this is one of my favorite cars here today. What I love is these two guys came together, they drove together all weekend in a 33, which is really clean and nice, and then a really clean Laurel. And both of these cars, as you guys know from watching JDM cars, blah, 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 prices skyrocketing, everything. But to be here driving two road legal cars, and they drive them hard for two days. And this is a mint road car, never alone drift car. Oh, like, this is a beautiful car. And there's two Laurels that are beautiful. There's another one over there. They've been driving all weekend. They're phenomenal drivers. And just to see them in one piece, like what? Eight, ten hours into driving this event. But don't jinx him now. I'm just saying, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> So it's a pretty, pretty brisk out here. It's cold. This jacket is not just to try and look like a Premier League football manager. It is. We still have a little bit of heat. Oh yeah. That's what you thought. Here we go. That's lovely. That now. <laughs> On a yes, coil over spring. This is the fanciest fire pit I've ever seen. A wheel with some chains on a flywheel on a coil over. It's lovely. It's lovely here. It's lovely here. I can't oh. feel my hands. One car now I didn't expect to see here. The Mustang at our Drift Games Invitational. Street drove it on the ferry from England. Drove from England on a ferry here to do two days drifting and has to drive it home. Has no other option. You know what, I was behind him earlier and I was like, ah, oh, no, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give him some space. I don't wanna be that guy. He's had all smiles. And then we got very cool BMWs with all the same liveries here. Another team again. Which yeah, really same cool. thing again. It's like only simple. It's a little bit of paint, a little bit of livery. Like, there's not much done to these cars. No, and then this, these two have been like door to door all weekend as well. So it's been really cool to see. And like, we could go around this pit, so there's like another 50 cars we can show you. But this video will be super long and we want to get back driving again. But um, kudos to everybody who came to the Drift Games Invitational. Showed up, drove hard, no big delays, no big red flags. The place was just hopping all weekend, smiles on faces. So. If this was a research mission, which is what this event was, 24 is going to be wild because we're going to add a bunch more stuff to this event. And last but not least, in my opinion, the coolest car here, 
is our red PS13. This is the car we're giving away to one of you guys this Christmas. All you gotta do is go on driftgames.live, grab a digital poster. We got about 50% gone already. We're trying to get it sold out as quick as we can so we can get someone the keys to this car. It is one of my favorite cars I've ever owned, but we got some big projects coming, so we gotta get something going so we can get something coming. Guys, one of you gonna get the keys of this machine in just a couple of weeks' time. It is $24.95. Grab a digital poster on the website. Don't miss out before they're all sold out. Let's get back to the drift. There we go, the first Drift Games Invitational is done. My voice is horsey, I've been laughing in the car so much with people, it's been so good. This is an event for us, it's uh, really good to meet other people that watch our videos and everything like that and to give back a bit to you guys. So thank you everyone that came down, it's been awesome. But damage report, as you always want to know. Rear bumpers, literally it on every car though. Um, I don't think they're broken broken but they never went back on the car. If you're a long term viewer of the channel, you will have seen our bash videos. Let us know what you think of the Invitational. Is it better that the cars are better? Would you want to see more wreckers, missiles and everything like that? Let us know in the comments below. So this is over and out from this video but we're pretty much going in a time machine because all of the content that Dave and Lucas filmed in Japan after the Matsuri is going to be released. So I think there's four videos from then. So the next couple of weeks, all those videos will be released for you guys. I've watched them already. They're awesome. Make sure not to miss one. But for now, from me, good night and God bless.